Monday afternoon, game day on TSN 1260. Oilers taking on the Flames tonight. Uh, they will have two more preseason games uh, Thursday and Saturday against the Vancouver Canucks, and then they open up the season against the same Vancouver Canucks next Wednesday. Uh, NHL season officially begins next Tuesday with uh, two games, and then uh, you are off and running for the 20. 20- 21-22 season. We'll get to uh, some predictions on uh, where you think teams are going to uh, finish and more, so that'll be a lot of fun coming up. Uh, everybody likes predictions, basically, because you like to chirp the people uh, when they get them wrong. <laughs> no one ever calls you and say, hey, bingo, you nailed that one. On fire. It uh, rarely works. Rarely, rarely works. Now, um, before we get to uh, Tommy Gazzola, hey, I've got to get to this. I love it. So, do you... Uh, you want to go to the uh, the game tonight? How about this? Woo. Rex Coat Seamless Flooring donated four Loge seats. Whoa. So if you want to go tonight, 100% you can go. Text in the word Loge to 10-12-16. Got to spell it correctly. And then Connor will pick a random winner and we'll announce it. So uh, text in Loge to 10-12-16. You could be going to the game tonight courtesy of Rex Coat Seamless Flooring. I wonder if there's a Rex who works at Rex Coat. Curious. Is Rex Coat like a flooring term? That's how you got the name. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what uh, Rex Coat is. Now I'm curious. I'll have to ask Doug about that. Anyway, let's get to uh, the Chronicles, brought to you by Action Electrical. They know everything about electrical. I don't know if they know anything about flooring, but they know electrical since 1973. Family run business. Don started in his basement. Now they got 90 staff and they're hiring. Go to Indeed.com. Look up Action Electrical. Great place to work, uh, Tiny Tom Gazzola. Joins us, uh, TT, what's happening? (laughs) 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 Oh, thanks for the laugh. I'm just getting ready for pregame here and uh, excited to see. This is is it, guys. The last week of the preseason before we get going for real next week. And uh, Duncan Keith in action tonight. I think that's going to be neat for Oilers fans to see. I know uh, some didn't like the deal. Some were not happy with... Him uh, waiting before he decided to get the, the the Johnson and Johnson vaccine, but here he is. He's going to be in orange and blue. It's going to be weird to see, but curious to see where he's at and where this goes throughout the week as uh, we get closer and closer to opening night. What are you looking for? Like, what do you want to see? What would you want to see from him? Is it chemistry with his partner? Is skating? His turning? What, what, what would you you know? What, what what would be the markers to say? Yeah, it looks like he's ready. Yeah. Strutty, like a flawless game, obviously, tonight uh, would be amazing. <laughs> perfection. <laughs> but, yeah, perfection. Uh, pucks out, pucks up, tape to tape, head manning it, maybe send a couple of guys in on breakaways, stuff like that, the usual. <laughs> no, no, but seriously, let's let's see where he's at in terms of uh, shaking off the rust. Um, can he de- develop some chemistry and form it with Cody Cece, who he's going to be paired up with tonight? And, and does having... Keith with CC help, help CC play a little bit better. Obviously, you know, people pointed at his game the other night, although he was one of the few guys that wasn't a minus on, on the blue line. I think he was the only guy that wasn't a minus on the blue line. Not that, you know, plus minus is the be all end all, but just some s- steady play, uh, being up to speed and being able to, to just bring that poise that a guy like that, who's a future Hall of Famer and has the pedigree that he does can to to this lineup. So just let's start there and, and see how it goes throughout the rest of the week. Dave Tippett, tonight you've got Perlini, Shore, and Turris as a line, which leaves Benson, McLeod, and Sevier out. Uh, I would assume those three will play in the next game. And, and those are obviously the battles for uh, spots, Tom. Do, you, do you, like To me, I think Perlini's a lock on the roster. I think Devin Shore is a lock on the roster. The other four... I'm not sold. You know, I don't know about Sevier. You know, Turris could go to the minors. You know, Benson could as well. McLeod could, and he doesn't require waivers. Where do you come out? Do you think Shore and Perlini are here to start in your 23-man roster? And uh, where do you pencil in the other four's odds? Yeah, those two, Perlini and Shore, I mean, whatever gap that they had created out of the get-go at the start of preseason, they've only widened. And it's been solid play offensively. That's nice. That's that's what gets all the attention uh, from the fans and from us is, is the offensive production. But they seem to be doing the other things, the intangibles in the game, the dirty stuff, the, the non-sexy stuff very well thus far. We've seen Perlini generally play decently in his own zone, getting pucks out, head manning the puck when it comes to him on the wall. The things that you need to see from veteran or 
bottom six uh, wingers. And then with Shore, like the, the offense that he's provided has been a bonus, but he's been winning face-offs. That's something that McLeod has not been doing. Uh, Shore has been killing penalties. Uh, I know McLeod's been out there killing some penalties, but you would think with Shore's pedigree and, and what he's generally been used for in the National Hockey League last year with this team, being out there on the PK, like that gives him a leg up over a guy like Ryan McLeod as well. So I, I do think it'll probably be Perlini and Shore unless you know one of them, knock on wood, gets hurt uh, in these last couple of games. And and then uh, with Sevier, like he was killing a lot of penalties too. He's played a lot of games. Him and McLeod played in every preseason game uh, up until tonight. And I, I don't know. If they believe Turris is the guy that can do the same uh, job that, that Sevier is able to do, then maybe they just keep Turris. And, and that kind of decides it there. So if if you are going to send someone down, I think it probably makes the most sense. And, and Greg, as you mentioned, the waiver situation with McLeod, to send McLeod down. Because one thing he has not been able to do is generate any offense or anything too dangerous in the offensive zone. And at some point, you're going to want him to be able to do that. Maybe some time back in the AHL could help him do it. Well, here you can, you can save this little tidbit for your post or pregame show, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how the Oilers' bottom six performs against this Flames defense. Cabranson, big, not very friendly. Zadorov, big, not very friendly. Anderson, same way. I think Tanev, we know how he plays. He, he's a hard, he plays hard. So you have four of the six team men on this, on this team that the Oilers are playing against tonight that are, are you know, you're going to be seeing them all the time. So it's a perfect time to audition. If I'm sure, if I'm especially Perlini and, and even uh, Turris, I've got to get to that those hard areas and play against these guys because you're auditioning against who you're going to be playing against. So really interesting matchup there, Tommy, that I think is something that, that you know, Oilers fans got to keep an eye on as they're watching this game tonight. That's fair, Struddy, because one of the things, too, and we Daryl Sutter talked about it today in his uh, brief availability, is they might go with 7-D on the blue line for the Flames, so we might see a couple extra... Uh, I know we're going to see Hannafin, but we might see these guys that have been around for a little while, guys who've been in the league, uh, get some playing time tonight uh, if they do decide to go 11-7. and seven. But in that game in Calgary to start the preseason, I was surprised that because four out of the, the six or potentially seven that are playing tonight did play in that game against Calgary at the Saddle Dome. And the Oilers didn't send a, a sexy lineup by any means to the Saddle Dome. And they were all over these defensemen. And one of those guys was Perlini, stripped Goodbranson at the Oilers' blue line, goes in on a partial break, gets his own rebound and scores. If he continues to do that, then, then again, it'll be arrow up for him. And, and next week when we're talking about the Oilers in their opener, uh, him and Shore likely on that fourth line to start the year. Yeah, I remember Good Branson. Like he, he's, he, you're not a, you're not a dangler. He's trying to do some dirty dangles on top of the blue line. And I'm like, buddy, you're a masher. <laughs> Got that puck down low. Like I, I'm sure Daryl Sutter didn't uh, love that one too much. Uh, we're talking with uh, Tom Guzzola for Tiny Tom's Tiny uh, Chronicles, Tiny Chronicles. <laughs> when you look at this whole situation, um, you know, up front, there, you know, the thing that's impressed me with Hyman, and we've seen it before. Is how strong he is on his stick. Like he, it doesn't seem like the, for you know, he's not a huge man. He's strong, but he's not a huge, powerful man. The puck doesn't seem to come off his stick when he has it. Uh, is is that something you like from him? And, and do you think that could rub off on some of these other wingers the others are, are wheeling around these days? It's something that I look at and go, boy, it's nice to see that from an Oilers forward, a guy that can be strong down low, uh, dig pucks out, strutty, find open guys. He's got the vision and the ability to make those passes. And when you're distributing to Connor McDavid or Yessi Pugliarvi, that's that's dangerous, especially in tight, because that's where Hyman's been good. Is like You see him get yeah. the puck in the corner, and either he continues the cycle or he gets the puck up high to the defenseman. Um, and it's usually at least two guys trying to take the puck off of him. And he's also good at digging up digging out pucks and getting them to the other guys. And it's it's been uh, not something that was a real issue for the Oilers, but they lack that ability to, to muck and dig and grind out greasy pucks, score ugly goals. They score a lot of pretty goals, but here's a guy, and I think Fogel's going to be able to do this too a bit, is uh, good stick in tight, 
able to get on that puck, find it and scoop it up and either try to get a shot off and uh, create an opportunity or get it to a guy that, that can be just as dangerous like a McDavid or a Pugliarvi and, and set something up to create a little more offense. And, and those are two, two guys that are going to bring these elements to the Oilers this year that the team did miss, and, and I like it. But, yeah, it's, it's been impressive to see how well he controls the puck, especially in and around the goal line. Tommy, uh, we have the pregame show coming up with uh, you and the con man at uh, 6 o'clock. We look forward to that. And uh, see, find out the competition uh, tonight. I, I think there's guys. Uh, Perlini and Shore, another strong performance, probably just solidifies themselves to have a spot, at least on opening night. It uh, doesn't mean it's going to be something there all year long. And the other thing I'll be watching as the preseason goes along is there's some guys in the top nine who are going to have to start playing a little bit better, right? Like I think they're going to yep. get the benefit of the doubt, but eventually they're going to have to start playing a little bit better, and uh, we can talk about those guys as well. Uh, Tommy, have a good pregame. We'll talk to you later. Sounds good, guys. See you tomorrow. There you go. That's uh, Tom. Gazzola in the uh, Chronicles, brought to you by Action Electrical. Mr. you ever electrocuted yourself? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's true. Like, really, the better nice. question, who, which guy hasn't yeah. electrocuted uh, themselves at some point? Well, I can tell you the uh, fine folks at Action Electrical, uh, well, they've probably done it. It's a rite of passage, I always think. They did want me to know, uh, Strutty, if, uh, if you could get the spark bucket for them. Oh, yeah, so, sure. No, I've yeah, got lots yeah. of those. Sorry, he's a big uh, fan of that. I know uh, uh, Blake and, and Don have uh, had uh, numerous spark buckets yeah, a few good. times at uh, Action Electrical. Check them out, actionelectrical.net. Uh, congratulations, Taryn. Uh, he won the uh, the low seats going to oh. the game. He's pretty fired up of course. to go to the uh, to the game. That's awesome. And uh, coming up next, uh, we will go down to uh, Calgary. But first, before we go, do you have a son or a daughter who's 10 to 17? If you can get them to call the station right now at 444-1260, 444-1260, uh, guess what? Uh, they could be taking you to the game tonight, courtesy of Aurora Dental Clinic. Just open up a new one, and uh, they're going to give a pair of seats to a boy or girl, 10 years of age. They'll call in, talk to Connor, and uh, you'll go to the game. So you can dial it up, 444-1260 right now. 525, congratulations, uh, Matthew, 13 years of age. He's going to the game with his dad. Nice. Nice. That'll be fun. Oh, yeah. Enjoy it. Thanks again to Aurora Dental Clinic. Nice. There we go. Thanks, everyone, for uh, sending their tickets in. Rather than waste them, get them to people who, uh, who want to go and maybe never get to go. So had a lot of fun. Let's get to our big guest of the day now, brought to you by Hockey Sticks and Honky Tonk and their second annual drive-in concert. It goes this Saturday night. Jade Eagleson, of course, uh, Jess Moskaluk, we had her on the show on uh, Friday. She gave some uh, singing tips. We're going to show Strutty that tomorrow. Oh, really? Uh, how to warm up your organ oh. uh, properly. We asked her about that, so too bad you weren't here. Yeah. But, uh, we just on your behalf, because I know you yeah, wanted to know. So if you want to go, they got a few seats left. Go to uh, sprucegrovesaints.ca. As the uh, Oilers and the Flames, for the second time this preseason, uh, will do battle this time in Calgary. Kristen Anderson uh, joins us, Flames beat reporter. And uh, Kristen, when you look at at the uh, at the Flames tonight, uh, I notice uh, we're going to see Hannah Finn for the first time. Sean Monahan's going to play his first game, but Monahan's not with Goudreau. Goudreau's with Lindholm and Kachuk. Is that just a test, or do you think we might see Monahan and Goudreau on separate lines this season? Earth shattering. I think we lost her. She was, it was earth shattering. Earth shattering. That, that leaves you. It's a cliff. Oh. Like, what? I didn't expect that. No, I, I mean, I think we all know how much those two play together. Um, so, you know, to, to split them up. And you got a new coach, right? You got a new, well, relatively new coach and Daryl Sutter coming in. Um, you know, his thoughts are probably different. You know, does, does, it, does it look better with um, Monahan on a different line? How does this all fit together for this group? Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think it is a pretty big deal because I'm guessing they played most of their – their time together, you know, power play and five on five. So where do they go from here? I wonder if it's just, you know, something to, to change it up by the, the coaching staff. Yeah. You know, like Sean Monahan was injured last year. Right. Yeah. And, and I don't think you can, you can downplay that. Uh, to be honest, he, he was banged up for, for a significant part of the season. He played hurt because if you look at it, and probably the stat that tells you how good of a goal scorer has been up until last season, midway through the year when he got hurt, drafted in the same draft classes. 
Nathan McKinnon. He'd had more career goals than Nathan McKinnon up until I think it was March of last yeah. season, right? And and he was banged up. And obviously he's not as good as Nathan McKinnon sure. overall, but it shows Sean Monahan's been a pretty good goal scorer, and uh, he's healthy now, or they, at least they think he is. And uh, Kristen's back with us. So talk about that, Chris. Do you think it's realistic they'll be split up? And if so, what would be the reasoning? <laughs> Sorry, I got excited. I this is a, truth be told, this is my fourth day back after maternity leave. So here I am. <laughs> there you go. Okay. But yes, no, I have covered uh, Sean Monahan for a very long time, and yeah, I think that it's a good thing. I think if you look at the way that the Flames um, lines have produced over the last three or four years it's been really heavy on one line um they can't rely on that you guys know that just as as well as we do in calgary um so i think splitting up sean monahan and johnny goudreau is a good thing for them because um you look at elias lindholm he's so versatile and he can play center he can play wing um and did so with johnny goudreau and sean monahan since um elias lindholm got here in calgary so i do think that um yeah you you look at the way that i mean the last game was kind of the first game that Johnny Goudreau scored in, in preseason. They looked really good, um, as, as you should, against a pretty rookie-laden lineup against Vancouver. So, yeah, I think, um, and then this being Sean Monaghan, as you mentioned, and Noah Hannafin's first game uh, this preseason since sur- pretty significant surgeries in the off season. So they're, you know, working a lot. They had a timeline. This is the plan all along. Um, but I'm pretty interested just to see in general how this team meshes because it's a, I mean, it, it, there's not a lot of battles this year. So it, it's however many games left until the start of the regular season. Um, these are the time, this is the time to, you know, get chemistry. And uh, I think Daryl Sutter would prefer to have a few different options in his back pocket. Does the arrival of Blake Coleman make that um, splitting easier for Daryl Sutter? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you look at Blake Coleman's experience. Now, Blake Coleman, I think Trevor Lewis is probably a, a bit of a placeholder on tonight's line with um, Andrew Mangiapane and, um, and and Sean Monaghan. So, Trevor Lewis, do I see him fitting there for the entire season? Probably not. Um, he's probably more of a depth forward at this point in his career. But, um, so yeah, you have Blake Coleman, who's out tonight. Um, there is some question marks around him, like what, what's he sort of – um, what's ailing him, or is he just trying to get back up to speed? I mean, he played 23 games in the yeah. uh, pre as, as the playoffs, like longer yeah. than anybody else in the Flames roster. So he's he's he didn't really have an off season. So um, you know, he skated today. That's a good sign that he's like there's probably not an injury. Um, but I think that yeah, of, of course that made it easier because um, you know that he can play. So and and the Flames, like truth be told, haven't had a lot of guys they can like insert um veteran guys they can really insert and know that they can produce so hopefully i think that they think that that blake coleman can do that for 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 this team so they can have more of a you know three line four line team and and that's what i want to go now is that the third line we're working our way down backland juba they tied at the hip and if so uh who who would be the front runner to take that spot on the on uh the the third of that line the third line uh the third line um yes it's, it's it's tough to say. Um, like, I mean, Backlund, you know, in a perfect world, Backlund probably should have been a, a, a third line center for for a long time. Um, Dylan Dubé had um, quite an excellent playoff uh, two years ago. Um, was one of their best players in the in the bubble. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a pretty interchangeable spot. Um, I think you have your fourth line pretty much set in um, uh, Blake or uh, Trevor Lewis and, and, and Milan Lucic there. So, yeah, it's um, there's not a lot of battles. I think the the defense as well too. I think it's, that's pretty much set with the three the three pairings there. Um, maybe a battle for the seventh defenseman, Oliver Shillington, um, and Eric Goodbranson is a pairing that I'm interested in seeing tonight. Um, and, and they've played Oliver Shillington quite a bit lately, so I think they're interested in seeing what he can do. And he's a guy who's kind of gotten forgotten about because um, he was drafted the same time that Rasmus Anderson was, and kind of fell a little bit in his development. Um, as Rasmus Anderson progressed, uh, so it, it's uh, to me the, the battle on the back end is quite interesting. I think that, as you know, you'll see the third and fourth line sort of be an interchangeable thing throughout the season. But uh, 
yeah, it's a it's a, it, it's, a, it's a totally different year for this this Flames team, which which is 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 pretty cool because for so long they've had Mark Giordano, and they've had Johnny Goudreau, Sean Monahan, Elias Lindholm. Like it's been pretty set in stone, but this year is a little there's a few different looks, which is which is exciting. Time with different looks. They bring in uh, Kirk Muller as uh, associate coach with the Flames now underneath uh, Daryl Sutter. What what does he bring that was maybe missing or that that, that Daryl felt was missing in their in their kind of group? Yeah, I think uh, you know oh, oh, experience, different voices. I think you know the the core. And for a long time, it was a lot of young young players like they really didn't have a lot of experience and so you needed to kind of finesse that I think Kirk Muller brings you know a, a different type of attitude um of course Daryl Sutter he's, it's been interesting watching him um and the way that he runs things pretty efficiently um yeah, I think like anything, you you just you'll get stale if you just have the same voices over and over. So I think that's the the reasoning behind bringing in Kirk Muller. The fact the Flames really didn't, you know, they didn't change their core group at all. They obviously brought in Coleman for yeah. sure, but there's a lot of people who felt like they were going to change those guys. Now Monahan was playing hurt, but this is the last year of a contract right now for uh, for Johnny Gaudreau. Now I know he he said the things that, you know, the the fans want to hear, "Hey, I want to stay here," all that stuff, but uh, you know, until you sign a contract, you know, that that's all that is is really nice. You never really know. It. Now him and Kachuk both need contracts. Kachuk's an RFA though, so it's obviously a little bit different of a situation. Were you surprised that they didn't tweak their core at all? You know, it's it's to me it's like one more tra- chance, and 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 you know I think we said that last year, we said that the year before that, like this, they're going to give them one more chance. Um, I felt that I think you have a natural change in the dressing room when you when you lose a guy like Mark Giordano in the way that you do. Um, so I think that was a big part of the 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 way that the culture was being you know dictated a little bit. I think you have that. Um, I, yeah, Monaghan has, you know, quietly been one of the heartbeats behind the Flames. Now, that can be debatable. I know people would, you know, um, can argue it both ways. But he, he really has been quite dependable, even throughout injury. Johnny Goudreau, as we know, can you can't replace the type of scoring that he brings. Um so much has been made about does he want to be in Calgary? Does he want to be in Philly? Like, I mean, it, 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 it to me, he does. Like, I, I think he does truly want to be with the Flames. He wants to win. But, like, how many more years are you going to do this? Are you going to be, you know, milling about in a, sort of a playoff position? You know, I think having a guy like Jacob Markstrom, like a true bona fide number one goaltender, that really gives them a chance to see, like, if you have this great goaltender and you can't win with them, with him, it's, it's, that falls directly on the shoulders of the players. And it's interesting, too, like, they don't have a captain right now. Who are they going to pick for a captain? And I really don't think they're going to decide until the, you know, the season gets going and so it, in, until it starts, you know, manifesting itself organically. And that's a testament to, like, who are the leaders? Who are the true leaders on this team? And Johnny Goudreau, maybe it isn't in his nature to be a loud, outspoken guy, but you certainly want him to take the reins on the ice. And year after year, it's just been the same story, them falling short of expectations. So at some point, this, is, this has got to change. But one more chance, I guess, <laughs> is what the, the management is, is hoping out. And, you know, it's a contract year, like you said. Um so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Just one last one for you, Kristen. And if I suggested to you that from here, what I see, I think a dark horse guy to be the captain would be Andre uh, Andrew Maggiopani. How crazy would you view that statement? <laughs> I I think that is a bit crazy. Is that like just because like Connor McDavid is is a captain for so many reasons, and I. I you know, I've been kind of talking about this a little bit over the last few days. Like, who is the? Who, and you could argue Michael Backlund. He's the long, one of the longest-standing Flames. He was drafted by Daryl Sutter. Um, 
Matthew Kachuk, when he got here, we all thought, okay, he's the uh, bona fide next captain of the Flames, just based on the way he was, you know, the way he cared so much on the ice. I know his name is sort of blasphemy in this, these parts in Edmonton, but um, it's, it's yeah, like Andrew, Andrew Mondrian, I think, is a bit of a stretch just because he's not necessarily a vocal leader. You need a guy that can demonstrate, like change a game, like like Jerome McGinley when he was in Calgary, changed a game every time he was on the ice or when he wanted to. Like when he got fired up deep down inside. And I think that in Calgary it's been so unique because – there's only been one captain for the last what seven years um that's really kind of a a little bit different in if you look at other teams um just the way that they've been made up so it's uh yeah i don't know like i definitely think that andrew mondrupani is a bit of a stretch um but but who's gonna who's who else is there though that's the thing if there isn't a clear guy in the leadership like sean monaghan perhaps would have the um makeup He's been a captain before. He was a captain um, with the Ottawa 67s when he was there in junior. So it's not a stretch for him either. But um, I think it'll be, like, in, in, interestingly, um, Daryl Sutter, just his his way, it, you know, I think it's going to come down to who he sees as, as being that leader, like, on the bench, in the dressing room. I mean, the guys know, I think, in the dressing room, as you know, um, who's, the, who's the natural leader. But I think uh, Daryl Sutter is going to play obviously a big role in, in selecting, like truly selecting who who it's going to be. Kirsten, uh, thanks as always for this. I appreciate your time and welcome back to the gig. <laughs> thanks. I got to remember how to do my job. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> thanks there for having go. me on, though, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you betcha. No, anytime. Um, long time. Be reporter just came off uh, maternity. Fourth yeah. day back in the job good for her. Right uh, back in there. Uh, good for she's good. good. I love to talk. Yeah, right. So Post Media, Kirsten Anderson. So uh, there you have it. Um, uh, that was our big guest of the day, brought to you by Hockey Sticks and Hockey Talk. And their second annual driving concert goes this Saturday night. There's two shows, 4 and 7 o'clock. Jade Eagleson, Jess Moss, Luke will be performing. You can get your tickets at SpruceGroveSaints.ca. It's uh, very easy. And uh, we will come back, uh, wrap things up. I think, uh, Cons, did you have, did you get the Jesse clip about the uh, bison? <laughs> oh, I got it, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, you have to hear this. Like, uh, yes, Apuliari, I'm sure some of you saw the uh, pictures of him. Uh, was down at uh, Elk Island Park recently for a little walk around. Uh, uh, him and his dog saw a bison, thought it was a really big deal. He's never seen bison, right? He's from Finland. He says they have big moose and reindeer, but no bison. So I just want you to listen to his answer. He's a he's a really funny kid. He's got a dry sense of humor, uh, yes, Apuliari. So we'll come up with that in the uh, oil report. Next on Edmonton Sports Theater, TSN 1260, you're listening to Jason Greger Show, presented by PlayAlberta.ca. Um, let's get to the oil report now, uh, brought to you by Volvo of Edmonton. What are the best dealership to work for in 2019-2020? Only at VolvoEmpton.com. Now, if you didn't see it on social media, yes, Puli Arby ran into um, what they're calling a buffalo. Uh, I ran across it in, uh, I think it was Elk Island Park, and he put it up on his social media. And you know what? When he came to Edmonton, you know, he 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 was he didn't have a good grasp of the English language. Um, but I find Finns to be very outgoing, very funny, and fun-loving. And uh, now it's kind of funny to hear his description of what happened. So let's hear Empton Owners forward, Yessa Pugliarvi, on his interaction for the first time with a buffalo. Uh, yeah, we went there, and we went a little walk there, and the bison was like 10 meters there, and take a couple pics for <laughs> picture with bison. So it was funny, and uh, the bison was kind. Nice bison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't move. Didn't move at all. So he stood there and let you take take his picture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do they have bison in Finland? They must. No, no. Uh, only uh, moose, big moose, and reindeers. A reindeer. That's. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Speck, you don't know that there's no buffaloes in uh, Sweden. Even I, I think I knew that, didn't I? Connor, did I know that or not? What about sure Finland? Or sorry, what did I say? Sweden, Finland. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just that, 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 that's pretty far. I know you there. know a lot about Sweden, but Finland's a whole yeah. new, whole new beast. Not different, different animals. So yeah, I know this guy, you know what? You can tell when someone is feeling good about themselves 
Uh, just think about anyone you know. Like if you're if they're feeling good about themselves, work wise or health wise or <clears throat> you know relationship wise, whatever it is, they t- they tend to be kind of funnier and 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 kind of show their true personality. So we're starting to see that for him. And I I I think yes, the player I've said I think he gets tw- north of 25 goals this year. Um, you know the way he's 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 understanding how to compete, how to complement uh, top players, because he's either playing with the world's best offensive player in McDavid or the second best offensive player in the world in Leon Draisaitl. So you know I still would like to see at some point Leon and Pugliarvi in the same line. That would be a handful to play against, like just two big moose out there trying to handle those two guys. So I'd, I'd love to see that. I, I You know, it seems like it's, you know, Pugliarvi is McDavid's uh, wingman. But, Connor, that's a, that's a duel that I'd like to see because I can tell you as a D-man, skilled big guys that hold on to the puck and are big, it is not fun. It is not fun at all, and uh, you you got to find a way to grind up against them. So I think that's that's one thing to look at, uh, you know, moving forward. But doesn't feel like that's going to happen. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think that this year maybe more likely than than last year or years past, just because they do have a little bit more depth uh, in in the top six, especially, but in the top nine, where hey, maybe that could happen. And to me, that just sounds like a shift. Like if that's an offensive zone uh, shift for for that that line, you're going to be tired after that one if you're a defender. Like that, that's just going to wear you down. And now you have to find someone to play with Connor. And, and you know, is that is that Pugliarvi? Is it Cassian? If that's how it shakes down, um, you know, like even a, a line of Fogel, Pugliarvi, and, and Leon. I mean, geez, I'm you know Hyman and McDavid, and then is it Cassian? Uh, who who is it? And again, I, I I'm not stepping over Dave Tippett or making up new lines, but I can like I say, when you play against two big skilled guys. And or three. Think of the Legion of Doom and those three guys. How big and how heavy they were, and it was just. A, and John Leclerc, like that guy, I swear I felt like he weighed 350 pounds. I couldn't move him. He was so big and so strong, but it was fun. Like you just you love doing it. Um, but this this is a real challenge. So I, I, yeah, I guess we'll see what happens as it, as it shakes down and gets closer. Um, if that is an option, he even he at some point just to get a different look. And just to see what it looks like, or if there's injuries, to shift into that uh, area. That was our report brought to you by Volvo Edmonton. Zero percent finance on select models, or if you want to lease, you can lease an XC40 for only two forty nine bi weekly, only at Volvo Edmonton. Dot com. Again, the Oilers are uh, taking on the uh, mighty Calgary Flames tonight. I, I This Flames team, I'm not sure I'm a believer in them uh, for sure long term. You know, they got to get Johnny Goudreau on a new deal at some point here. they got to get um, to, uh, Matthew Chuchuk on a new deal. And if it looks like they're having a difficult negotiation with his brother Brady in Ottawa, so why should we expect anything different here? Uh, in Calgary, then Goudreau's up. You know, a lot of their, their kind of their 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 bottom forwards are are up for it. Uh, Zadorov's got to get a new contract after he is here, so they've got a lot of question marks in this group. And I, pretty big year for this group. Uh, Connor, what do we expect coming up on the uh, pregame show with uh, Tommy Thomas Gazzola? Well, <laughs> good nickname for uh, for old Tommy there. Yeah, probably uh, more of what we've been doing today, just talking about what we think is going to happen. Uh, I think uh, the areas of focus for the Oilers in this one. I know Tippett said he's going to be kind of paying attention to the bottom six, more specifically the bottom nine. So I know that's where our attention will be. We'll have former NHLer Matt Cassie, and of course our in-game analyst will join us uh, in the pregame show, and then we'll hear from members of the Oilers as well. So that's what's coming up from 6 to 7 right here on TSN 1260. Awesome. Awesome. Well, listen, everyone, thanks for joining uh, with us uh, today. Love the text all the time at 10, 1260. Really going to be interested to see how this plays out tonight. Yeah, keep an eye on it, but remember... If you have a great preseason, doesn't mean you have a great regular season. If you have a bad regular season, doesn't mean you have a bad, uh, sorry, a bad preseason, doesn't mean you have a bad regular season. So let's kind of stay on somewhat level. But uh, tomorrow I can't wait to talk about Duncan Keith, the other stern fourth lines, and of course the plays of mighty Miko Koskinen. Before we check out here, we'll get a sports update brought to you by Alexi Heating and Cooling. Home, no payments, no interest for one year on your AC unit. Don't be a sweaty mess. Go to LexiHeating.ca. On behalf of Connor, myself, and Jason Vager, thank you to all who listen. Enjoy the pregame show up next, everybody. Have a great night.